Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about brief classification of kingdom plantae. And now we will take up all those individual groups and the subgroups in those. So we are first starting with Thallophyta, which includes the organisms or the plants which have thallus like body. That means not differentiated into stem, root or leaf. The first group of that is Chlorophyta. Chlorophyta group which we commonly know as the group of green algae. So we will first take up chlorophyta that is the green algae then we will come to the red algae and the brown algae. All three come into that thallophyta group. So in chlorophyta let us first talk about the general characters and then we will take individual members. Chlorophyta as the name tells us they are green so they have to have the predominant pigment that is chlorophyll. So the pigments which are present mainly are chlorophyll A and B plus there is carotene and xanthophyll. So apart from the green pigments there are other pigments also but these two pigments are the predominant one and that is why the algae appears green in color. Chlorophyta, that means these green algae, they show a wide variety in form and shape. So, we will take certain examples. Say, for, we talk of unicellular motile. That means the green alga is just one cell and it is going to move. So, example are Chlamydo monas type of algae. Then we can have unicellular but non-motile green alga. Under this we would write chlorella. So this is the example of unicellular but non-motile green alga. Then they can be filamentous also. So let us talk about filamentous and unbranched. Filamentous unbranched green alga. In this we take example of Eulothrix and Spirovira. Now other one is filamentous and branched. So here the example is Cladophora. Then they can be in the form of a colony. So colonial Example would be wall box. There is one more shape which is found and that is umbrella like. Umbrella shape and the example is acetabularia. So these are some green algae and this gives us an idea that they exist in various forms. So this is another very important thing. The next general character which we are going to see in all green algae would be two layered cell wall. Now these two layers are the inner one is made up of cellulose and the outer is made up of pectate or what we call the pectic material. So cell wall is mainly cellulose but there are two layers. The inner one is cellulose layer, pure cellulose and the outer one is a pectic material. The reserve food is starch but there is one more structure which is found and that is called the pyrenoid. These pyrenoids are embedded in chloroplast and each pyrenoid has a core of protein which is surrounded by starch grains. So it gives it a flower-like appearance where the central part is the protein 
and the peripheral are the starch granules or starch grains. So this is what is a pyrenoid. This is also a reserve material and it is it remains embedded in the chloroplast. And as they have chlorophyll, the chlorophyll is present in chloroplast. Now the flagella, coming to another important structure that is flagella. They are flagellate. If they are flagellate, because we have written here that they are motile or non-motile. So if they are motile, they would have flagella. And the number would vary from 1 or 2. But there can be a structure where we can find 4 flagella also. So 1 or 2 which is normal and sometimes there are 4 flagella also present. Now where exactly these green algae are found? They are found in fresh water, ponds, puddles. These are the areas where we find, find green algae. Sometimes we find them in moist areas where the land is very moist and damp, we can find those. So they are normally freshwater, free living and uh, this is these are the places where they are found. But there are few which can be epizoic or parasitic. So very few parasitic and they can be epizoic also. Epizoic. Epizoic means they are going to grow on the body of other animals. On other animals. Like shells of some animals. And it, they can be found on the body of the sloth bear or even on sponges. So these are epizoic ones. One example is zoo chlorella. Zooglorella is an epizoic alga. It is not a parasitic one. It is growing on the body of other animals. And parasitic are found in the tea plant and pepper. So there are some variations also, but most of them are photosynthetic. So they are growing, they are going to grow independently, free living forms. But very few parasitic and some types are epizoic also. So this is some general thing about the green algae. There are some special things which we will talk about when we take the examples. Under green algae, we'll be talking about three main examples and we'll try to study their life cycle also. One example that we are going to talk about is Clamidomonas, which is the unicellular motile one. Then we'll talk about Eulothrix and then Spirogyra. The green algae, that means whether it is Clamidomonas, Eulothrix or Spirogyra, they are haploid. So here we can write those extra things that they are normally haploid and show haplontic life cycle. So life cycle is haplontic life cycle. That means most of the stages are in the form of haploid cells but they do show reproduction which is sexual and asexual. So during sexual reproduction when those haploid gametes fuse, zygote which is formed it undergoes meiosis so there is meio zygotic meiosis which takes place here. One more special thing which we will write about uh, these green algae, we can write it here. The reproduction is asexual as well as sexual. Asexual reproduction takes place by zoospore formation and zoospores are formed in favorable conditions. Then there are other spores formed which are called aplanospores. Then there are hypnospores and akinids. And these akinids, hypnospores and aplanospores, they are produced in unfavorable 
favorable conditions. So these structures, they help in reproduction as well as to withstand all those adverse conditions. And then the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction where haploid gametes are going to fuse. Now these gametes could be exactly same. So then it is going to be isogamous. Or if the gametes are different in shapes and sizes, then it is an isogamous. And the third is where the female gamete, that is egg, remains stationary. Male gamete is smaller and motile. Then it is known as oogamous. So all these types of reproductions are seen in case of green algae. When we take these three examples, we'll talk about which particular type of reproduction is seen in which particular green alga. So this gives us a general idea about what uh, is seen in this group of chlorophyta or green algae. Now in the next part, we'll start with chlamydoma.